Hello and thanks for watching this Cloud9 ERP Solutions video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this Acumatica Fast Track implementation series, we're going to talk about sales tax for customers. So to get started, we need to check out our chart of accounts. There's a few chart of accounts we need, but in the end, we'll set up our taxes and have them calculate and set up our tax reporting. So let's go over to our chart of accounts, go back into finance, chart of accounts. And we need three accounts for sales tax. The first one is a liability account for tax payable. And you can see we have that set up right here. The second one is a tax claimable account. And we have that set up as well. That's an asset account. And the last one is an other tax expenses account. And that's set up here. The next thing we need to do is set up a tax agency. This is the agency that we pay the taxes to. Now, if you recall, when we set up the vendors, if you're going in order, we created a sales tax authority. So let's take a look at this vendor profile. And we check this box here, vendors a tax agency, which enabled this tab. And for that tab, we now have the ability to fill in our payable account for taxes. We can fill in our claimable account right here and our other tax expense account. The other thing you do here is you set up and configure the schedule the state authority has you on in terms of how often you charge taxes and file your reports. So this is monthly here. You can also define that tax period by the end of a financial period. And when we create our tax report, we can automatically generate the bill. And you have some settings here for rounding. The next thing we need to do is to set up our tax categories. So we go to more items, taxes, and we go to tax categories. Here, we can add a tax category. And the tax category is so that when you sell a particular item, so in this case, non-stock items that you may have created in Acumatica, maybe it's different services, for example. If you have the distribution module, maybe it's different types of products. But tax categories give you the ability to have different tax rates based on what you're selling. So for example, we'll have a taxable, it's a standard taxable category, and we'll have an exempt. Again, if you have a state that has different types of services or different things, different exceptions and rules, which provide different tax rates based on the kinds of things you're selling, you'll continue to expand this and maybe even be more descriptive about it. But in this case, we have either taxable or exempt items that we're selling. The bottom section is reserved when we start to create our tax IDs. And then the next thing we need to do is to create our tax zones. So the tax zones are geographic locations that can automatically trigger different taxes based on the location. So for example, in a specific state, you can have a tax zone for an entire state if it's not that complicated. If it's a state where there is state and county and local taxes, then you'll have different tax zones for that as well. But if we add a tax zone, and in this example, we use Denver. Additionally here, you can apply your different tax IDs, but we don't have it yet. We won't do that right now. But notice the zip code. This allows us to provide a zip code range so that when we're creating customers, we don't have to fill in the specific tax zone based on the delivery address, zip code. The system can automatically apply that tax zone 
to that invoice. But for this purposes, we can leave this blank, but here is where you would add all your zip code ranges. You can click the import button here if you have a ton of different zip codes that you want to bring in. This default tax category is, by the way, for if you have an invoice and there's no tax zone, Acumatica can default to the particular one that you select here. The next thing we want to do is create a report setting. So if we show all here and we go to report settings, the first thing we do here is we select our tax agency. We can pick a report version as we're making new changes to it. We can change the valid date to whenever we start using this report. So now we need to add our report lines. So these are the lines that'll show up on our tax report. Later we'll include them into groups and they'll be associated to tax IDs. So we'll put in here sales and use, tax. And what you can do here is you can put in the tax zone. So if you happen to have multiple tax zones, we may not for this one, but let's say you, for example, have a state and a county and a local tax. Acumatica will put this label there so that when you're looking at the report, you can see that breakdown. So this updates the line with the tax amount. We can define a specific tax ID for this. In that case, you wouldn't need this field here. We'll detail it by tax zones. Again, this will break it out if there's more than one tax zone. We want to see the net tax. And this will be number one. And then for our second line, we can just show our taxable sales. This will show how much the total sales were, again, by tax zone. And the same thing applies. In this case, we're not looking at the net tax. We're looking at the total taxable amount. And this will be two. So we'll save this. Now, the next thing we need to do is to go and put in a reporting group. So if we hit the plus button here, we can make this group our taxable sales. And it'll be our output. And if we click group details, we have the ability to then take the reporting group and align it with the reporting line. So in this case, we want these two lines here. And we'll save it. If you get an error message in the screen, go back to your report settings screen. We go back and make sure that your reporting groups saved. If you try to add this line and then hit group details, you'll be able to get into the new screen, but it might not have saved this in the first place and you get an error message. So now that we've completed our report settings, we can go to taxes and now we can create our taxes. So just to take a step back, we have our tax zones, that's for geographic purposes. We have our tax categories, that's for what you're selling whether or not it's taxable or not, or whether it falls into a different tax calculation. So we've done that. Now we got to create our tax codes. So we'll create a new record. We'll call this Denver Tax. This is for sales. We'll select our tax agency here. You have the ability to change not valid after. If you have a tax rate that's expiring, you have a new one coming up, you can certainly use that. Additionally, down here, you'll see we also have a start date. But we'll add a row for the tax schedule. And this will be the tax rate. So it'll be 8.31%. Optionally, you have the ability to have a minimum and a max tax amount. So this could be the different rates, the tax rates, based on the different brackets of what you're selling the customer. But in this case, we'll leave that zero. And then we'll select our reporting group here and save it. 
So now just to take a step back before we go any further, what you have here is a tax rate of 8.31%. It started at the beginning of time. And it doesn't matter what you sell. It's the right tax rate. This is our tax agency here. And you have these other tabs here, categories and zones. So what this means is that if the categories and the zones match, we're going to use this tax rate. So we'll go into categories. We'll select taxable. We'll go to zones. And we'll select Denver. And we'll save it. So under the conditions where the customer has a tax zone ID of Denver or they fall in the zip codes that Denver allows. So meaning the customer's got a blank tax zone, but their zip code, the shipping zip code, falls into this tax zone. That means this is true. So that's the first step. And if we sell an item that is taxable, that's the second step, we will hit this tax category. Assuming these numbers match and the date matches and all that. So that's it for sales tax and sales tax setup. Of course, every state is different. We highly recommend some of the different tax integration services that Acumatica offers. Acumatica's tax reporting is decent, but you may find situations in certain states where the sales tax laws are complicated enough that you need something additional. For example, there's an area in Georgia where on one side of the street, it's one tax rate. And on the other side of the same street, it's a different tax rate. These are some things that are just very complicated depending upon the state. But for our fast track implementation, this is definitely sufficient. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to us. Thanks so much for watching our fast track implementation series and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Have a great day.